Hey everybody, my name is Clancy Emanuel. I'm president of HKN, or Ada Kappa Nu, which is the Electrical Engineering Honor Society. And we have the privilege of using this really cool facility here at UConn called the Light Board. And we're gonna ramp up our videos with this rather than uh, how they used to be. So keep an eye out on our YouTube page, UConn HKN. Um, and let's get started. So this is gonna be a problem for circuits one or ECE 2001. We're going to be solving for the power dissipated across this resistor using mesh analysis. So the object of mesh analysis is to find the currents going through each loop. All right, and once we find each of these currents, what we can do, once we find I3, um, we can calculate the power that's being dissipated across that resistor. So let's get started. There's a couple things we can actually do to simplify this a lot. If you'll notice, we have a current source in parallel with a resistor. And what we can do in this case is we can swap them. So I'll do that right now. So as you can see, we swapped these two here. And now it's really easy to find I1 and I2 because I1 is the current going through this loop. And that's just this current source right here. So that's going to be 5 amps. So I1 equals 5 amps. And then same exact concept for, for right here. We're looking for the current going through this loop. And that's just going to be 15 amps. I2 equals 15 amps. So now, unfortunately, it's not as easy for I3. But we do have a way to solve this. It's called um, what we've been doing is mesh analysis. So basically what we're doing, the basic principle that we're utilizing here is Kirchhoff's voltage law, or KVL, as you might know it. So KVL states that the sum of voltages around a closed loop, closed loop, equals 0. So let's use that on this loop right here. So let's see. <clears throat> we'll go this way. All right. So we'll have 15 times I3. That is the voltage being dissipated across that resistor. And then we'll have plus 8. We're starting here now. 8 um, times I3, which is going this way. And then I1 is going this way. So we have to subtract that. Minus I1. And then we have to account for this right here. Plus 2. And that's going to be I3 minus I2. And then we always follow the sign of the voltage source. So we're going to subtract 30 volts. Right? Peanut gallery, can somebody confirm? OK. I have my crew over here helping me out. And this is all going to equal 0. <clears throat> so now this is just uh, basic algebra with one variable to solve for. Because our variables are I3, I2, and I1. Um, but these are constants right here, I1 and I2. So really, all we need to solve for is this I3. So let's do some quick algebraic manipulation. Um, let's expand these terms real quick. So we have 15 I3 plus 8 I3 minus 8 I1 plus 2 I3 minus 2 I2 minus 30 equals 0. All right. And now let's combine like terms. So we're going to have 15 plus 8, which is 23, plus 2, which is 25. So we're going to have 25 I3. And then we only have one term with I2. So it's going to be minus 2 I2. And then we have minus 8 I1.
and then minus 30 equals 0. Um, and what I like to do when I'm going through problems is do just a quick dimensional analysis. So I didn't write the units in for this 15 and this 8 and this 2, but they're in ohms. And then the units of this are amps. Okay? And so we have R times I, which is V, which is good because this 30, this 30 right here is a 30 volts. So um, let's just plug in our values for I1 and I2 and solve for this. So we have 25 I3 minus, let's see, what's I2? 15, so minus 30. And then we have 8 times I1, which is negative 40. And then we have minus 30 equals 0. So we have 60, 40, 100. So we have 25 I3 equals 100. So I3 equals 4. So now, uh, the last step that we have to do here, <clears throat> I'm going to move so you can, you can see me. The last step that we have to do here is solve, like I said, for the power that's being dissipated across this resistor. All right, so now that we've solved for this current, which is 4 amps, units are important, we're going to solve for the power that's being dissipated across this resistor right here. So the equation for power is P equals I squared R. All right. So now we just kind of plug and chug. So we have P equals I squared, which is going to be 4 squared, times R, which is 15. And that's going to equal 16 times 15, which equals 240. And the unit for power is watts. All right? And just thinking about this, it, it kind of makes sense. Um, you have a lot of current being pumped through here. That's 4 amps. Um, so that's going to generate a lot of power. So let's go over real quick what we did. We had this circuit. If you remember from the beginning, we swapped these because it was more convenient to find the mesh analysis. Um, it was more convenient to find these loop currents, excuse me. And then what we did is we used Kirchhoff's voltage law right here. And we summed the voltages around this loop. And if we run into a voltage source, we follow the sign. So we do minus 30. We plug that into an equation up here, right here. We just did basic algebraic manipulation all the way down to here to find I3 equals 4 amps. Use the equation for power, and we got 240 watts. So. This is our first official video with the light board system. Um, keep an eye out for more. And come to tutoring from 6 to 7 in ITE 301 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We tutor circuits 1, signals and systems, and systems analysis. Look forward to seeing you there. See you next time.